Well, I've taken off the access panel, which gives me great access to the radio and behind. And as you can see, there's plenty of wires in there. And if I was to spin the camera around, you can hopefully see the, uh, the knobs that are undo, to undo the back of the radio and then pull the radio out. So we'll get on and do that, get our hands in, and hopefully it will be a simple job of just uh, disconnecting the wires and pulling that out. Now, anyone who knows boats, it's normally not that simple, but let's hope and pray, fingers crossed, it'll all come out nice and easy. Got the old glasses on, the old eyesight's not as good as it used to be up close, so uh, I've taken the knobs uh, behind the radio and it's just a matter of pulling it out now and undoing the necessary connections. There we go. Aerial connection, let's undo that. Getting them all off. Put that aside. The power connect connections is just a matter of unplugging. So we'll do that as well. There we go. And then the other connection, it's just a matter of pulling it off as well. And there we go, it's out. Let's take that off. It's a fair old hole there. It looks like I would said, like most boats that are fair old age, it's, that wasn't the original radio at some point been changed looking at the hole and as you, anyone knows who's got older boats you have all sorts of fittings and holes that you have to fill or whatever you need to do to, to cover the hole up so someone's put a bit of wood in there to take up the uh the dimensions of the radio so uh by the look of this and the look of my radio the ray marine radio that is that it's probably not far off on that so I'm going to undo these four screws, get rid of the bits of wood, and then we're going to see where we are with the template. There's the hole, and wouldn't you believe it, just that small portion there is too tight. So I'm going to get a file and just rub that along there, bring it a bit down, and then it will fit snug as a bug in a rug. I offered the actual radio up, and it was just that little bit too tight. So I thought, right, let's get this right. Let's just give it a little bit of a file down there so it sits in and, and snug. And uh, in that always the way, it, just that little bit. So uh, not the end of the world, but, you know, just one of those little frustrating things in life sometimes. You think, why didn't it just fit straight in and it'd be all good as gold? But hey oh, let's so file out, give it a little file and uh, it is, it's uh, absolutely lovely in there then. So the radio is now fitted in. Just a little bit of modification to get it in there, as I discussed. Got left to do is to drill the four holes that uh, screw the actual VHF to the panel in. Uh, get that done, and then we can screw it up, get it snugged up, and then uh, we can start uh, wiring the actual VHF up. Well, the mountain uh, screws are now drilled, and now we've got to get the face of the um, radio off to reveal the screw holes so we can obviously screw it in. Now in the very back, I don't know if you can see that, there's uh, some little lugs that you can put a screwdriver in and it just prizes off and just be very gentle when you do that, nothing forceful, take your time just to pop the cover off to reveal the actual screw holes. So we'll get on and do that and, uh, and then we'll get it screwed up, mounted it on and all happy days again. So before I mount it, I'm going to put the flush mounting pad on there. So it's just a matter of popping it out, the middle insert. And then we're going to take off the, uh, the back end and we're going to place it on the radio. So we'll do that now. It's a fiddly job. So I think we'll take this one off camera. The backing is now on, it's a sticky side and the non-sticky side to the um, padding. The sticky side goes towards the actual face, or the back of the face I should say, of the uh, 
radio. So let's get it located through. And we can put the screws in as well then after this. Looking good, it's looking good. Let's get a screw in. I'm not called shaky angler for nothing. I'm terrible at things like this. This is where I am a nightmare. I'm just gonna nip it up that side. Nip it up that side. And we'll get the other two screws in. I've not gone mad with this, just, just nipping them up. I don't want to put that too much pressure on it. Literally sort of fingertip tight, really. Hey presto, it's in. So there we go, I shall put the cover on to hide the screw holes, I'll do that now. And then we can concentrate on sorting out the wiring. So new cover, it's just a matter of popping it on. Sure, it all clicks in nicely. You can hear it sort of pop in. There we go. All happy days. So uh, let's get the wiring done and then we can put the mic and all that up in a minute. So we've got the existing wires here. So we've got the power and earth there. This is the old cable from the old radio. We've got the cables that link down into the uh, GPS. Luckily, I took some pictures of everything before I uh, dismantled this, so I know what's going where, which is always a good thing to do. Take pictures. How many times have I forgot things and I'm like, oh, no, I wish I'd taken a picture. It just makes life a lot easier when you, you know, you, you can't remember or not too sure. So. Let's get that power cable whipped off. So I'm just gonna undo the actual tape here. God knows how long this has been on, but we're gonna just whip it off and then uh, we'll bring you back when that's all done because that's a boring job. I have uh, powered it up. I've not connected all the connections yet. I've just literally connected the power connections and obviously it gives you all the prompts of what you need to go through. So obviously what language you want. So I've done that. Turn AOS, AIS reception on. We definitely want that. So press the button. We're going to go enemy 0183 is what we're going to work it on. That's the network we're going to run the AIS on. I'm going to do that. Please enter your MSI number to access the DSC features. So, 
we've got to enter our number. So for this portion of it, I'm going to put the video down and enter the number correctly because you only get one chance. So I want to make sure that I concentrate on that and not mess it up. So I should put the camera down and put the number in and then we'll bring you back. Like any good job, it always overruns and we're into darkness now. It's outside. So I've put a light on and hopefully this will work out for us all. Um, so power that up, all good. Put the MSI number in, all good. I pretty much got to that stage and left it at that. Then the next thing I wanted to do was do the ME cables uh, to the GPS, which is going to then send the signals through the cables to the GPS to show the IAS, sig IAS signals got there in the end on the actual uh, plotter sort of thing. So the wires you need are brown and white. Um, I've put them to red and brown or black, I should say, so as earth. So white is um, positive out and brown is negative out. So they're all linked up. And if I show you what you're seeing, hopefully you can see the icons for the uh, signals you get from the um, boats in the uh, marina there. IAS signals. So done that. So let me just quickly talk about this while we're on the actual plotter. Is at first I couldn't get the signals right, it just wouldn't happen in. So press sorry, get rid of that. Try home even. And I went to settings. Go to networks, go to enemy setup. And you've got to make sure you put it to AIS 38400. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you, you won't get the signal into the um, multifunctional display unit. So I've done that. As soon as I've done that, up it comes straight away sort of thing. I couldn't work it out at first, but I managed to work it all out. And there we go. Back to normality. So... Just a matter of putting the panel back now, tidying some of the cables up, tie wrapping them up, getting them all nice and sound, and then we'll go into the functions of the actual um, VHF. When the panel's back on, I've put the mic hook on as well, so it's all sitting there nicely now. It's all finished, completely done, and it's just a matter of about setting it up really, um, and to your preference. So the big big um, button there is you turn around to change channels, but you can also do it on the mic button there as well if you need to. High and low as well for high and low settings on the mic, and a 16 plus button straight away if you get, need to get straight to 16, it's all on the mic. Uh, back to the unit itself, so yep, so you can turn that around to change your channels. I'm sorry if this is jumping around. You've got the squelch menu here and the volume, so there's the volume, just turn it up and down, it's just a matter of twisting the knob like that. And also, you can do the squelch if you just press it once to turn up and down and I'll set that tomorrow when, when I'm out actually out and about so you got the light let's talk I power off so you can sort out the back light there I've got it on number one at the moment so we can, we can turn it up so it's just a question of pushing the button and up and up like that there we go so six seven eight off all nine so we leave it at nine, nice and bright. Push the button, so you've set it now. You've okayed it. Contrast, you can adjust that if you need to. And if you scroll down there, you can edit your shortcuts um, on the actual unit as well if you want to. So your DSC, your VHF channels. A load of stuff there to go through. I won't go through all of that. 
if we go back there we go okay so we press the button now you can set up your DSC calls we got watch mode give that a click so you can do dual watch triple watch or you can put a second priority channel in if we go back from there scan mode so you scan you can scan all, all channels save channels if you want to save some channels and scan if you, so you've got a favorite channel that you know your buddies are on but you want to also listen to 16 then you can do that go back okay so does it again okay so so system setup so you've got display set up there language so let's go display so you can sort your backlight shared brightness if you want to do a shared brightness contrast which we talked about home screen display so you can have your location time you can set that up for different parameters if you like let's go back units again you can set your time format up as well Power output is high, we're on the high output at the moment. Sensitivity, you can change that. Noise cancelling TX, key beeps if you want to turn that on. Channel setup, so, so you can sort out your channels as well. GPS setup, so you, I'll put GPS is on, so we want it on. And you can change it into internal or external antenna. And there's loads of other options here. Bear in mode, position request. Loads of stuff there. Your DSC setup. I've put my MSI number in. I've not really done any more with the DSC setup. I've just left it as is at the moment. I will put some numbers in later on. And my AIS is on. I'll click on that and turn it off. Or on and then the network output in is 0183 the high speed for the AIS to work properly you need the high speed so and then maintenance and it just tells you about the unit system reset if you need to do that or system test press the back button do that again Um, so you've got a 16 plus on there and obviously you've got a little flap here that if you were in distress and you need to contact the Coast Guard quickly, lift the flap up, press the button and then obviously the, send the signal to the Coast Guard who will know who it's coming from because you've you put in your MSI number, you should know your location and that hopefully then start the, uh, the process of... Uh, coming to you and getting and getting sorted out whatever you need hopefully it's not a may day of uh, or anything too serious so there it is there's the rain marine ray 73 it absolutely fits my purpose uh, i'm absolutely over the moon to have it so as you're probably aware i'm quite a rain marine fan i've got rain marine uh, multifunctional display unit and all oh, got radar as well and um autopilot as well so it's all ray marine now it's, it's all pretty much interlinked the only thing i haven't interlinked and with the backbone is the vhf here i've decided i'm not going to do it i'm just going to leave it as is so i hope you found this video useful it's just a bit of an insight to installing a vhf stroke ais receiver and yeah so um please subscribe to the channel if you've been watching and you're a regular viewer give us a thumbs up any comments are always welcome mainly constructive ones that's even better and until next time i'll see you soon